Good evening, sewing machine fans, and look what I've got for you tonight. Those of you who have been into sewing machines for a while will probably recognize this classic right away. Yeah, yes, look back here, give you a chance to guess. We've got the pod motor with no belt, and we've got the light on the front of the arm, and the drop-in bobbin right there. This is a Singer 201. And looking at the uh, serial number starting with AL there, AL3816, this machine was made sometime in the spring of 1953. Singer Manufacturing Company. And the machine has been used, but certainly not abused. It's in great shape. And we'll get to sewing on it here momentarily let's just look at a, a few of the features of course here's the light right there on the front of the arm it's the light right up front where you can see it um, down here is the rest of the awesome gear drive system you can look at the uh, that geared shaft that runs underneath the machine it connects from that lower shaft and up to the motor there are no belts nothing to slip the machine is very powerful and very smooth. We just uh, get the camera into the bracket here and show you some stuff. You get to hear the machine run. Now, Singer did do a top drop in bobbin with all of its class 66 machines. In fact, that's what this bobbin is here is a, a basic Singer class 66, little domed ones, and these come in clear plastic as well as metal. The really old ones like this only have one hole. You see the slightly domed top? Uh, so uh, more modern ones, I think they have four or five holes around here. And then of course the clear, I mean modern plastic ones are clear, but if they're the same size with that little domed top, they're correct. Now, the class 66 bobbin, this is not a class 66 mechanism. This is something unique to the 201. Uh, they started with the, the 101 in the 1920s was the um, precursor to this machine. The 201 took it all the way. The 201 was produced from 1938 to 1964. Very amazing design here. Watch and listen. See how that shuttle is going around in one complete circle? It's not going back and forth and back and forth, which if you've ever watched a 66, the oscillating action. The 201 is a full rotary. Look at how slowly we can sew there. Now, listen to the beautiful precision as I step on the accelerator. Very quiet. Very smooth. It's not even shaking on the table here. It's not mounted in this cabinet. It's just sitting on top. All right. Well, let's thread it up and see what the stitch looks like then, shall we? Okay. Well, the first thing we've got to do to sew on a any sewing machine actually is wind the bobbin. And most old-fashioned machines, <laughs> many modern machines as well, you declutch the machine by turning the center knob towards you. See now, the machine is free to rotate. And we're going to wind a bobbin by taking our top thread. Actually, let's use the uh, this other thread spool down here. Let's use the whole bobbin winding setup. This thread goes down here. And then around. The tension disc. And then let's get our bobbin. And put the thread right through that hole. And then put the bobbin on the spindle. And there's a little, a little pin on that spindle. Let's see where we get this. You see right here, there's a... Uh, you want to get that little pin 
in that little hole right there. Right there. Okay. Click this down in there. Oh, for those of you who have seen 201s before, this is no big deal. But a lot of times people want to see exactly how this works. So, just hold this thread here. And there you go. I guess the machine is not moving because we turned that big silver knob and declutched it. I'm not going to wind a whole bobbin because I don't need a whole bobbin for this demonstration. The class 66 bobbin will hold a lot of thread and when the thread gets full there it will push that little lever and it'll automatically stop. So that means you can wind a bobbin with this setup here while you're sewing with another thread there. You don't have to stop and wind a bobbin. Cheesy but true. There it is. I kind of liked it myself. Let's put the bobbin over there. And let's put it on. And here we have the bobbin, which has got some thread on it, ready to be inserted into the bobbin case. Notice the direction that the thread is coming off there. And you just want to stick your bobbin, just drop it into that case. And there's a notch here and a notch here. You want to pull it from this notch into that one. And you'll hear a slight click. And you want to pull it across the bobbin like that. So see how it just sort of unwinds if you pull on the thread and winds like that. Going around and around. Just go ahead and let that thread hang out there. Just let it hang. That will thread the top part of the machine. Okay, let's thread the top of the Singer 201 here. It's pretty simple compared to a lot of machines. Not a lot of thread guides to go through. Just put your thread on top there. And there's one little staple there. And then this is the part that's the same on every sewing machine. You've got a lot of some tension discs there. There's two little plates that push together and hold the thread and that's what applies the tension. So you go between those and then you come over here and you pull up. And see how that spring went? I'm going to show that to you again just so you get it really good here. Through those tension discs. See how I'm holding it here? Kind of like you're flossing those discs. Put it on in and then you pull up and that and you've got that little check spring going there. Okay, and then through the uh, take up lever and down. And there's a little staple right here on the face plate. And another guide right there. And another one at the top of the needle. Let's turn this down here. Turn the light back on. See that part a little bit better. And the 201 is also like the 301, the 101, and the 221 featherweight. The thread goes inside, from inside out. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and thread that needle up there. Woo. And there we go. Okay, and like all Singer machines, so let's raise up that thread. And like all Singer machines, the hand wheel turns towards you this way. So we're going to turn the hand wheel and raise up our bobbin thread. We have to tighten that inner knob. And there we go. Little bobbin thread there. So now we've got both threads on top and we are ready to sew. Oops, a little bit long tail on that one. Come on there, bud. Let's just trim that up. Okay. Now let's just sew. I've got a piece of denim here that I've been testing a lot of machines on. Um, so we've got red thread on this, so we'll be able to see which stitches are the 201. Let's lower the presser foot back here. Okay. And stitch length is right here. Reverse. Make sure that's in the thing there. Reverse is up and forward is down. This knob is something that you can 
uh, lock it so that your forward and reverse stitches are the same length. I usually like to let that run free. I'm just like that. Right, I'm going to go with the longest stitch all the way down. It's probably about six stitches per inch. And so, oops, let's go down the way to see this part, huh? That's what we want to see. Woohoo! Smaller stitch, reverse, forward. So there it is, folks, the 201. It goes forward, it goes backwards. It has, put the camera focus in here, I'm just gonna focus in, an amazingly balanced, exquisitely perfect straight stitch. That's what I would say this machine, that's what it's for, that's what it does. Um, let's fold that denim over. When you got heavy fabric, you want to have a long stitch length. Well, my cap camera stopped just sort of suddenly in the middle of that last demonstration there. Um, <laughs> and I already it was too bad, too, because I was fixing my husband's tool belt. See this red stitching line here? I was going to town on that, but you know what? I've still got this heavy duty webbing to sew here. And, uh, I love it when I have to demonstrate machines and have to do wet mending at the same time. Alright, this is kind of a big, heavy, gnarly job here. But I'm going to guess the 201 is going to handle it just fine. And I've just got a plain old, I think size 14 needle in here. Ah, let's just see what happens. We want a long stitch length, which we've got. And let's... And I've sealed the ends of my webbing with a lighter so they don't just kind of unravel. Let's give it a go. And then back stitch. Oops. And front stitch. This is really heavy duty webbing, folks. This is a contractor grade tool belt. This machine is not having any trouble with it at all. Let's stitch down. This way, oops, that's why I'm having problems. I've got this all clipped together. I have sewn on 201s a lot in my sewing career. I really especially adore them for, um, Really intricate piecing and top stitching. Stuff like that. Okay, now instead of flipping the whole thing around, I'm going to turn it like this. And then put it into reverse over here. So then all I've got to do is guide my fabric backwards. Yeah. And then forward. Back. Forward. Got an arm out of the way there. And again... Let's start out with the backwards on this one. He's got a job to go to tomorrow. He's going to be so happy that this is fixed. Oops, I busted the top thread. That's definitely something that wants to happen. The 201 was, I think, announced to the public at the 1930... Was it 1936 or 38? I'm sure some of you out there know. World's Fair... And uh, it was a direct descendant of the 101, which Singer designed in the 1920s, specifically to be electric. And that's the way it's a 201 as well. You can't turn a 201 into a treadle because of that gear drive motor. You know, it doesn't have the... And back... You know, if I had a size 18 needle in here, I'd be a little more reckless with it. But I really don't want to um, break a needle and stick it in my eye. <laughs> and then I'm just going to finish with an X right across here. Like that. Straight forward. Now the 201 is a... Boy, that's not very pretty, is it? 
So to get for combining machine demos with mending. Um, the tool one, oh gosh, that's heavy, is a low shank machine. So what that means is your feet have the low singer low shank and there are so many attachments available button holers and narrow hammers and zipper feet and all those nifty victorian things for sewing fancy stuff the needles regular 15 by one singer needle and as i showed you that bobbin plain old class 66 now you're going to want to put this in a cabinet or a case you can sew with it on a table but gosh look at all the goodies underneath there's some some things that spin and, and move under there see that and you might not want to get your fabric or your fingers all matched up in that so you want to get yourself a cabinet to mount it in we do have some cabinets available but we don't ship them if you're near us in oregon we'd be happy to show you what we've got this is a really awesome machine folks i mean i i love 201s and this is a really nice example of one. The decals are not ruined. Like I said, it's been used but not abused. It's very smooth. It's very strong. And if you would like to own this machine, we would certainly like to get it to you. Good homes only. <laughs> Give us a call or better yet, an email at Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine. Thanks for watching.